Hello. In this session, we're going to see how to broadcast uh, a variable across the entire application using Zend registry. Um, once we get that concept down, uh, we will slightly improve our authentication mechanism. Zend registry is very simple. It has got to be the simplest part of the entire Zend framework. And even the manual describes it in a way that you should have no problem understanding it. It's as simple as putting in the value into a variable in this format. So this is like our variable name that we want to push across the application and we're putting in some kind of value into it. Um, getting it is just as simple as calling the name of the variable. And then we have some um, fancy things like checking if the variable is there uh, or if it has a value. So uh, you should be pretty much okay uh, on your own to go through the manual on Zen registry. Uh, so uh, back in tutorial 5, I showed how to log the user in through Zend auth. And then in the later one, um, I described how to get the user role from the ACL. The assumption that I made was that if the user is not logged in, or the guest user, uh, he will have uh, a null identity object. So auth would never be called, and then the identity would be null, and then null would mean that he is a guest. Uh, to show you precisely what I mean by that, I'm going to turn on PHP notice, uh, restart my web server, and notice how we have these uh, PHP notices, trying to get a property of a non-object. So just like I said, the Zend auth is not being used, so there are these null objects that are floating around, and that's how the uh, Zend ACL knows that we're dealing with a guest. This may be okay for small applications, but then some may not be comfortable in uh, having notices being generated, or some may wish to have a more complex hierarchy of the permissions. Some may not be comfortable with null. Some may want to have a discrete um, identity for the guest. So uh, to do that, we need to somehow g create a default role that will exist in memory even if uh, Zend auth is null. So basically, the only time we want to get the identity from Zend auth if auth actually has an identity to start with. Uh, once it does have an identity, we are going to put it inside of a variable available to the entire application. But if auth does not have an identity, we are going to give it some default value. Uh, so here is uh, exactly what that's going to look like. If Zend auth does have an identity, and of course we got to start from an instance as identity, we want to put the role uh, to be available to the whole application through a role variable. And as I said before, we can use then the registry for that. We're going to set a variable called role. And we are going to give it a value. coming in from Zend or storage. Otherwise, role is going to be equal to guest. So once again, if Zend auth has an identity or the user is actually logged in, 
we're going to grab its role and we're going to put it into this variable here that will be available to the entire application. If Zend auth doesn't have an identity, we don't want to mess with dangerous null values. Uh, instead, we're going to give some kind of a default value to the role variable available to the whole application. So now that we got the role written inside of the global variable name, whether Zendorf is there or not, we can access it in any way that we want. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to take out uh, all of the previous instances of auth that will generate that notice. Uh, so we don't really want auth up here anymore and the plugin check that we are currently that currently relies on Zend auth uh, will have to be adjusted so we, we don't want the auth instance anymore up there uh, we don't want the parameter there either uh, we don't want any of that we just get the role from the registry there just like that so no matter what auth is null, not null, whatever uh, we have a carefully controlled global variable role that is going to determine the permissions here and then there should be one more place that needs to be adjusted right throw this parameter out and right here as well finally we need to adjust our ACL to accommodate the new user that we, are that we created called guest uh, at the moment we're using null uh, so we want to create a proper guest account and then we want the user to inherit from guest and now we allow guest to be in login now you see straight away how much more secure and flexible this is um, you can really fine tune your control much more by giving your guest some specific role name rather than just arbitrary null which can really get out of control if your application grows any bigger uh, so with that we can now test our application there uh, if I log in or do anything uh, it should work just the way it was before so I can still log in I uh, still have access to my books, I can still log out and go into administration it works just the same way but now I have a much more flexible control with um, the help of a well-defined variable that I can use anywhere and um, uh, more implicit name of the account rather than just arbitrary null.